This is Richard Samelka. So I just want to summarize um, the important question that people will ask themselves, and that is, how do I know if I have catalytic deposition disease, or you now how can I uh, be sure that I have catalytic deposition disease? Well, <clears throat> so the baseline, and interestingly, even the baseline is oftentimes quite sufficient to be quite clear that you have GDD. And that is, number one, you received a gadolinium injection with MRI. Number two, symptoms developed shortly after getting that gadolinium uh, injection. Of course, the most obvious is it's if it's happened right away, which um, in most people, as I've said, um, from right away to within two days, uh, most people, maybe 80%, uh, they develop the, the uh, symptoms of GDD. Now, interestingly, with extremely early presentation, like immediately, it probably is that uh, they have acute hypersensitivity reaction, which then persists as GDD, which happens in a certain percentage of people who have acute hypersensitivity reaction to gadolinium, it persists on as GDD. And that actually is one of the reasons why they describe failures of management of acute hypersensitivity reaction in, GD, in acute hypersensitivity reaction to gadolinium because the disease has progressed to GDD. And in order to treat that, you need to actually remove the gadolinium and not just what's done with acute hypersensitivity reaction, which is to give steroids and antihistamines. So the baseline, you've gotten gadolinium, new symptoms that came on shortly, we accept up to a month. So based on that, when I hear that combination of things, I can be quite sure that they have GDD. But to confirm it, which is uh, important for, for most settings, you want it confirmed. The next steps that have to occur is the removal with an effective chelator. And again, I only recommend removal with an, with an effective chelator. So I actually use DTPA also as a provoking agent. I don't use a lesser uh, chelator. So in chelation of gadolinium with DTPA, um, you get a gadolinium removal flare because, again, that happens immediately. So the flare comes on any times from, you know, right after getting the chelator to within a few days. And interesting, I think in cases of pure GDD and not mixed with acute hypersensitivity reaction, pure GDD, the flare oftentimes occurs two days after it becomes noticeable, the gadolinium removal flare. Again, if you're using a lousy chelator, which again, I never recommend, at the same time, a gadolinium redistribution flare would occur. But what is very distinctive and maybe most specific, at three weeks post chelation, and again, you should be not longer than four week intervals in chelation, at three weeks, quite often, a re-equilibration flare occurs. And that may be the most specific finding of all, because you can imagine that um, getting any IV and getting anything, that you get some sort of symptoms. And you can think, is, is that symptoms just because I got an IV and something? Or is it symptoms from gadolinium um, removal flare? Well, it's usually obvious it's gadolinium removal flare, but IVs alone and giving something also gives people headaches, nausea, and so on. But to three weeks later, get the symptoms coming back. And what a flare is, is basically intensifying the symptoms you already had, although they may be in a different location, such as you have right rib pain, and now after chelation, you have left rib pain. Sometimes uh, the flare can be in a organ system that you didn't have symptoms before, but that's uh, more uncommon. So for instance, you, your vision was okay, and then the uh, gadolinium removal or gadolinium re-equilibration flare resulted in some vision disturbance. That, is, that does occur, but that's rare. 
The good news is that with further chelation, these sort of um, uh, re-equilibration flares eventually disappear as the gadolinium is also moved out of the area where it's been uh, either uh, re-equilibrated from or that you weren't appreciating that it was present, but when it was removed, uh, you developed a flare to it. So that's the bottom line. Uh, the diagnosis of GDD, you got gadolinium developed within a couple of days, new symptoms, certain type of new, new symptoms, which I've described. And then with chelation with an effective chelator, early on, you get a gadolinium removal flare. Later on, you get a gadolinium equilibrium flare. flare. Now, What's interesting is all of that is also true for all other heavy metals. And in particular, that if you're sick from it, when it's being removed, it makes you sick, hopefully transiently, uh, a little bit uh, sicker again, because if the thing is making you sick, mobilizing it again in your body so your immune systems throughout your body recognize its presence should make you sick again. So <clears throat> that's why, and we'll finish with this, <clears throat> patients with um, lead toxicity, they have to um, react when lead is removed. People with lead... <laughs> <clears throat> and in, in a similar fashion, people with other heavy metal toxicities like lead they also should have a lead removal flare and a lead re-equilibration flare. And also the treatment for these other heavy metals follows the same course that you need multiple sessions because you need to remove it from the most stable reservoir. And I think in all metal um, treatments, most people still at the present time misunderstand what persistent high levels of metals reflect if you're showing that the metal's coming out, for instance, with 24-hour urine. If the numbers stay high with um, post-chelation, that means you're getting out more gadolinium or more other heavy metal from the more stable reservoirs through the process of Le Chatelier's principle, the re-equilibration of the reservoirs of that heavy metal. I think something that people who are chelating with EDTA for lead don't understand that. And the other thing maybe they don't understand is essentially everyone, unfortunately, has lead in them. So you can chelate lead out of everyone. And one final note on lead, the best way to treat lead is exactly the same way we treat gadolinium with DTPA and uh, concurrent steroids. It's by far the best way to treat lead toxicity. Thank you for your attention. Bye.